Freddy, you look weary. Sit by my campfire. You really don't get a break, do you? You're too weak. You're too strong. But look, if you were unusable, I'd have seated down someone else. Even your rework wasn't enough. It's like someone walked into a room with zero creative ideas and said, as long as they stop complaining, it'll be fine. Well, no one is looking, though. I wanted to say that you really were kind of cooler before they glued those things to your skull. You felt like a real dream demon, drifting through the game, grabbing people and taking them into hell. And I imagine a developer hearing that and tearing out their hair before saying, nothing is good enough for any of you, is it? Sadly, they're not wrong. The grass is always greener, at least according to those numbskulls that are boycotting the game. I've spoken on it before, but I think people that treat their devotion to a game like Guerrilla Warfare should be laughed at. Sadly, on the flip side, I can't say that my perception of behavior hasn't been damaged by their ineptitude. I don't think it comes from malice. I think you just give your team off on weekends, unlike the rest of the industry. But that doesn't mean I'm going to like the alternative, because unlike you, I do work weekends. Sorry, I forgot you were sitting there. That tends to happen when the other person isn't replying. My point is, I think the reason we all hate you is because you might be the most poorly designed killer in the entire game. Not the worst, but your building blocks are made out of cauliflower, if you get what I mean. Though I did bring one friend. Did you really think I'd have invited your gross ass here if someone weren't paying me to do it? This video is sponsored by Hero Wars. Hero Wars is a mobile game for iOS and Android, and without them, this video wouldn't exist, so sit down and don't tap the forward key, I rigged it to explode. Hero Wars is an RPG-driven mobile game with a deep story mode that unlocks right at the outset of the game, featuring over- Sorry, just keeping you on your toes. Featuring over 130 missions, and if you download the game today, you'll get 1,000 coins on your first chest opening. The game is also over 50 heroes. Move over, fire department. The world has already been saved. Each hero has unique abilities, and you can mix and match to build your perfect team. And you can even play that puzzle game that you always see in mobile game ads, but you can actually very clearly see the solution, except this time you can really play it and be right. Also, you can face all of your friends in plenty of PvP game modes and make them pay for reminding you of your flaws as a human being. Being. Surely you could put away the voodoo dolls after that. And I have a magic QR code so you don't even have to stress the bit where you type it into the app store. Or you can go to my link in the description to download the game for free. So what are you waiting for? Join the 4 million members of the Hero Wars community and when you download the game today, get access to a secret hero. Okay, one more, just to make sure. All right, time for you. Forgive me, when the sun gets really hot, I tend to hallucinate and say things out of context to the conversation I'm in. So, Freddy, what do you do? Sleeping is what Freddy's entire power revolves around. Every survivor on the map gets a ticking clock next to their heads. After 60 seconds, they fall asleep, and, well, that's kind of what happens. If being asleep mostly meant you just had a small silver filter on you. While asleep, they are half oblivious. I say half because they still hear lullabies, but no terror radius perks work for you. They are at the mercy of your dream abilities, though. That sounds dramatic, actually. Now the stuff that you can make becomes visible and can affect them. The words at your mercy implies it's kind of hot. Freddy can set two different types of traps depending on what kind of mood he's in. We're gonna start with the more traditional ones, the pools of blood that leave souls of the damned who will slow down anyone's movement. Here are the things you need to know. These have almost no purpose when you're not in the chase. They give away people's location, but as a survivor, I play hopscotch and jump on every single one. Disable it. Why not? I'm not afraid if he knows where I am. I'm already 10 miles away. They aren't effective when placed away from the action. Realistically, you ought to just throw these onto the ground when you anticipate a chase in that area, with the only exceptions being hex totems and the exit gates. This is why I hate you, Freddy. Your power isn't a tactical one. You just pepper them out like you don't care. Look, I'll just deal with the cards I'm given. If you want to use these to shut down a chase, you want to aim for the center of loops, because the slowdown doesn't actually stop them from throwing down a pallet or vaulting a window. Place it in a spot where they actually have to run a bit before they're safe. The second power is the blood pallets. These are little pranks that you can hide about. To a survivor, this looks, sounds, and feels like a real pallet, but when they attempt to slam it down, it explodes into blood and isn't actually there, allowing you to attack through it. As Freddy, try not to make it too obvious that you know the pallet isn't real. If the killer suddenly rushes into battle, he's either got the power of fake pallets or family. One of the other traits about this is that it grows in power as the match goes on. You gotta place these in the spots of other pallets, and to make money, you gotta break money. The only qualifier to take this into the game is that you need to bring an add-on for it to replace your regular blood pools, basically making you night and day depending on what kind of loadout you set up. I really like the surprise factor, but would it have really have been all that hard to just give him both and then limit how many he can use of each? For the other add-ons, I'd put them in the 
higher echelon, above, say, Death Slinger, but below the pig. For example, you can set debuffs on either of your traps as long as you want all of the bad ones. I do like the pill bottle, in theory, as it makes you sort of phase in and out of the match when survivors are awake, but I don't really understand the purpose of making you invisible while carrying someone. I'm guessing a lad on the design team probably just thought it looked cool and didn't want to sacrifice it during the rework. Then there's the stuff that increases the recharge on your teleport, and oh my god, I totally forgot that was a thing. Which is funny, because it's probably the strongest thing about him. Freddy casually charges this meter, and when it's full, he can select any generator and begin channeling a teleport over there. It recharges a little bit faster for every Dreaming Survivor, except I don't always use it for map pressure. I think it's just as good at cutting off survivors or making them lose your position. But when you think of teleporting add-ons, I imagine your mind goes to the class photo. Every time you teleport with this, every generator will mimic Freddy coming out of it, but the actual Freddy will only come out of the gen you select. The paintbrush will cause every survivor to fall asleep at the start of the match, then remove their ability to wake up with failed skill checks. Meaning that instead of self-harm, the survivors need to solely interact with clocks or have someone else wake them up. It's alright, but I think it incentivizes people to just not bother waking up at all. When you're not in a chase, what does it matter? It's not like the blood palettes have eyes and fling dirty words your way when you're not looking. The black box is laughably terrible. This blocks the gate for survivors when they fall asleep, but only for 15 seconds. It's an ultra add-on that basically makes you win a very specific situation. You're chasing someone at the end, and the gates are open, but you won't get them down in time. You'll win that situation, but I'll say what the fuck was wrong with the last one. The previous black box meant that the obsession could never be woken up, and that branched out into stuff like putting on furtive chase and nemesis. Of course, who knows what the black box will end up being next year. I didn't know it was going to transform into this when I had the kind of similar but not really series blank explains by a jerk as this game is a live service and I will be forever doomed to be dated because this is a spinning wheel that I'm attached to. I made that garbage video in early 2019. All of my subs were from Gordon Ramsay. I was still looking forward to Death Stranding. Now I play that game and see it as the work of a human instead of some bizarre magical idea where every breath out of its Lovecraftian game design should shrivel me dry. So why can't I look at you as the work of a human? Well for one because you've got a lot of warrants out for your arrest. Come on, Freddy, why do you think I built you this campfire? You're legally not allowed within 100 meters of most buildings. But the other is that I just don't see any passion in what you are. I feel like this weird power you have is basically to cover up for every bad part of other killers. Something to appease, not entertain. Reminds me of someone else. Okay, you're right, I have been avoiding doing a guide on Trickster. And, to be honest, the problems with Trickster are the same ones that Freddy has, except four years later. Here's what's wrong with the Trickster, and what I would do about it. Just a small side quest. I don't know if I'll ever cover this if I don't do it here. Trickster throws blades, and you need to hit eight of these for damage. I'm just setting the basic rules here, I'm not squeezing in a second guide, relax. While holding these knives, though, he moves very slow, and his base movement speed is already not too great. I would set it so that pulling out your knives fundamentally changes how he moves. Now the trickster is locked into hopping when he's attacking. Yes, I mean that. Whenever you pull out the knives, instead of walking, the trickster can now quickly jump 6 meters within one of four directions, and then get forced to stand still for 2 seconds when he lands. During that pause, he can throw knives. Now he can navigate line of sight blockers, but in a way that forces him to commit to the direction he's going. This fixes three of his main problems. One, he now has a fighting chance on indoor maps and can be mastered in more ways than accuracy. Two, it will separate his gameplay from Huntress and Deathslinger, who play basically the exact same way. And in my opinion, the most important, it will give him something that fits his identity. He's a performer known for dancing. As it stands, he just opens his pockets and throws trash like Onision became a hobo. But if you see him constantly dashing about and cutting you off, then you've got a character that can be called a trickster. I'm not saying this trickster rework is perfect, what I'm saying is that it's something. Because by the end of that rework, it's not even the same killer. Which is to say, and this is the coldest thing I will ever mean, I would genuinely have refunded this guy if I could have and paid half price for his perks. Sorry, that got really full of itself, and I don't want to see you trying to wake up from this nightmare either. Let's talk about something I like about you, Freddy. Your three personal perks. Fire Up increases almost all of your action speeds by a small amount whenever a generator is finished. This lasts for the rest of the trial and gains a little bit of an extra token each time. Normally, I actually dislike stat buffs because no one can look at me, eyes full of confusion, asking me why the fuck I was running Dead Man's Switch. However, the way that this perk works is actually kind of fun, specifically for characters like Legion. For you guys running Brutal Strength, maybe give this a try instead. 
Blood Warden is what I'd call a YouTuber perk, something no doubt attributed to by me. Blood Warden will block the exit gates for 60 seconds after you hook a survivor while the doors are open, meaning for that whole minute everyone is fucked. I don't like it because it does nothing when it's not doing everything. Yes, I know, big shocker, I didn't like it after all. A lot of games just don't get to this situation. Either they 99% the doors because they will always do that, or you've won hard enough for the 1v1 door game, something that our next one will cause you to win every time, while still being good on its own. Remember Me used to be my favorite perk in the entire game. This increases the time it takes to open the exit gates by 4 seconds for every time you've hit the obsession that match, leading to an overall delay of 16 sec- okay, it sucks, but this used to add up to almost a minute and I don't really know why they changed it. Back when the pig could apply active traps after all the gens were done, this perk was amazing. They changed it after the end game collapse update was added in, but that only starts after you open the door. Whatever though, the L is still in my inventory. This section about recommending perks is more of a plea than any advice. Out of all of the killers in this game, there are two that play like the most boring creatures on earth. Freddy and Hillbilly. I think it's because you guys are compensating a little from when you basically had nothing, but I'm getting very fed up with playing against you. Especially for the little tiny losers going, well survivors should get rid of this and this first. shut up. As survivor mains are going to say right back, well they should get rid of this and this first, and one of you has to give first. I don't care which side as long as that person is the one watching this video. Be the change a little toad. You might find that building your loadout from specific things you learn while playing is ten times more helpful than adhering to dead by dogma. Even if it's just one perk, okay? Freddy goes hard with tracking perks, stuff that will let him know which gen to go to. Ah, oh, goddammit, those are everyone's favorite perks. And the newest perk that would help is Eruption, but that deadass wakes them up when it triggers. Likewise, Hysteria is stupid because your dream state already inflicts half obliviousness, and you don't start the match with a teleport ready, so Lethal Pursuer is useless too. Alright, there's one perk that I found did kind of do well. I feel like I recommend Blood Favor too many times for a perk that's objectively about as good as sinking into the ocean. Blood Favor is a hex totem that will block pallets within a 16 meter radius for 16 seconds when you hit a survivor with a basic attack. Then it gets a cooldown of 40 seconds. Personally, I just set it so that the spikes go down only after the hex is broken, but my fictional game design degree is eluding me. The thing about Blood Favor is that everyone is in awe when you bring it and forgets it exists at the same time. So you equip this when running the blood pallets to cut off their options, then force them into your booby traps while denying the pallets that they need. I'd say give it one slot. Two if you can throw in Undying. Kind of embarrassing that I've only got two perks considering that my whole spiel has been giving you entire loadouts for other killers, but I did my best. You know, I really do have to be honest though, Freddy. I hate the people who play you. You're balanced now, but I roll my eyes when you pop up because 90% of the time the person playing you has an IV drip so that they can sweat inside their own veins. Probably because they're so used to playing you to win. Now that you're balanced, they don't know what to do because their life was so small. Do you know how long we go back? October of 2017. I was still new to the game, but that was an exciting time. I'd sit in my overbearingly large community college cafeteria and just keep hearing about new cool stuff you guys were making on Twitter. Each killer was a pumped up event, and I didn't really tap into how they designed stuff so I didn't care to see it bettered. What happened between now and then? I'll tell you what, five years. And those five years are up against me. I chose to play this game nonstop. I cared enough to make news updates. I cared enough to make up my own perks and reworks, even though it's an arrogant assumption that I could somehow have valuable input on a team that's been doing it for 10 more years than I have. But when people look at the game now and demand that the developers finally fix all of these problems that have been building for years, I can't help but see people fighting against themselves. I'm gonna put this rude little guy in his cage, okay? I think you need to internalize something. I love media. It's my favorite thing on the planet. I have prefixed my life around stories for better or worse. The thing is though, at some point, media ends. You can watch your favorite movie all you like, but if you do it consistently for five years, you will stop feeling what you felt, worsened by the small tugboat of hope through Dead by Daylight's updates that maybe it'll make itself in the image of what that person in 2017 saw. Every set of patch notes comes in and adds new stuff that is summarily dismissed by its player base because it's not exactly what they wanted. The sad thing I've learned in these five years though, is that this is how they do things, and it's not going to change for a long time. However, I don't just say that to people who think killers are weak. I have to fall on my sword and be a little honest. I think I mean that about the bugs too. It's embarrassing that the most hyped up character is also the second buggiest, and I want to stress that I'm not some corpo that throws himself at the knees of their glass windows so they might gift me with a new skin for my main, 
but the part about loving media is also trying to be grateful to the people who make it, even if my appreciation was mostly given when I paid them my money. That said, I still don't support the boycott, as it's mostly guided by people without a clear outlet for their rage and are trying to build communities off of jerking themselves off. Trying to bully the developers into fixing the game and inadvertently pushing for the same crunch culture that rips up other games is absolutely stupid. And I think it's okay to lose faith in something, because there's always a possibility that you could be proven wrong. Whoa, jeez, Freddy. If I was making you so miserable, why didn't you say anything? Whoa, 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 whoa!